Good Wednesday morning of the fourth week. By God, this is a great text by Isaiah. This, boy, he's, now this is an earlier text. The text we had the other day was from chapter 65. This is chapter 49. So the church is being really selective here. It's not a historical rendition or even a literary rendition. It's meant simply to bring out theologically our faith and strengthen our faith during the Lenten experience, you see? But here's what he goes, he says. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I answer you. See, a time of grace. On the day of salvation, I help you. Think of Christ now. Even though Isaiah has got a rough idea. And I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to restore the land and allot the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out. To those in darkness, show you so you can say that if you want to look at that and say the prisoners of death, those in darkness, ignorance, show yourselves. Along the ways, now he goes to a pastoral theme here. You can see he's a desert guy, see, herdsman in the desert. Along the ways they shall find pasture. On every bare height shall their pastures be. They shall not hunger or thirst. Now look at this image of the desert, think of this. Nor shall the scorching wind or the sun strike them. For he who pities them leads them. It's the new Moses. It's Christ. And guides them besides springs of water. Think of baptism. I will cut a road beside springs of water. Excuse me. I, uh, excuse me. I will cut a road through all the mountains. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really botched that. I will cut a road through all my mountains, make my highways level. Imagine if you were walking. When you drive a pickup truck or a car, it would a mountain to you, okay? And if you're walking it, imagine. I remember I was hunting in, in Montana, and that's the Rockies. Man, I, and I was, that was 40 years ago, 35, 40 years ago. I was still in relatively decent shape. Forgot about it. Holy gosh. Every step, I remember every step felt like a, I could weigh 500 pounds climbing. You got your rifle, your pack. Oh, man, at one point, I asked the fellow I was with who was sort of guiding me. He was a friend. He wasn't a professional guy, but he was a guy. He was, he was something special. Uh, uh, Mar uh, Milo Burcham. And I said, Milo, could you carry my rifle? I couldn't even stand the weight of my rifle, eight pounds. That's... When Isaiah says it here, I will cut a road through the mountains, trust me, and make my highways level. Believe me. Believe me. I know what he's saying there. And I was just there for for hunting, as it were, an, an avocation. Can you imagine if it were my life? See, some shall come from afar. Just a great vision of redemption, the whole humanity. See, some shall come from afar, others from the north and the west, and some from the land of Sain. Sing out, O heavens, and rejoice, O earth. Break forth into song, you mountains. Look, look at how he animates the natural order of things. The world cries out, see? The natural order sings, is the, praise, sings the praise of God. It's a beautiful image. See? For the Lord comforts his people and shows mercy to his afflicted. But, now this is, may be one of the best lines in the whole Old Testament, or at least Isaiah. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. Could they imagine they felt that way? Yeah. My Lord has forgotten me. I would think maybe the people in Auschwitz must have felt that way. How could they have not? But look at the response from Isaiah. Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. That great line, no matter what, I have not forgotten you, I'm with you. That's God's promise, I am with you. No matter how it may seem, he's not, not giving you consolation, he's giving you hope. I'm with you. Come, come, come what may, I am with you. I am with you. And you stay with me, we'll cut through the mountains. It will always be, you will always have food and drink. Trust me. That's what I think God is saying here. 
through the genius of Isaiah, trust me. Trust me in this desert of life, no matter how harsh it may seem, no matter how bitter it may be, trust me. And I believe that. That's why I think faith is a matter of just, not just cognitive belief, but seeing and trusting the God you believe in, but trusting. You know, trusting. I really believe that. I don't think it's a cognitive exercise. You're not doing philosophy, okay? You don't have to trust anything in philosophy except your own good wits. When it comes to faith, it takes everything you've got. You know. And the promise, of course, is eternal. That even in the face of death itself, death cannot be victorious against the goodness and love of God. As the mother cannot forget her child, God will not forget us. As the mother gives life to the child, God gives life to us. And now the life is eternal. And this is where he says in the of John, okay? Okay? He said, Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming, and it's now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Isn't that a, what a consoling line? For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he gave to the Son the possession of life in himself. And he gave him power to exercise judgment because he is the Son of Man. Don't be amazed at this, because an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life, but those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. God calls us to life, not death. Yeah, that's powerful, isn't it? It's the hope that death is not final. I think of this very, very much now. As two of my family have died, my age group, my sister-in-law, Carol, her sister, Nancy, was a year younger than me. She was 78, 79. She just died of cancer. And my cousin Harry, who's exactly 79, he died of a parent heart attack. I'm very cognizant, very, very deeply aware of the passage of life. And I feel its loss enormously. I feel it. I feel the emptiness that comes with death. But I feel it and I grieve. Very, very poignantly I grieve for both Nancy and Harry and for those of us who have survived. The survivors, Carol, my cousin Camille, oh, who really suffer tremendous loss, tremendous. But I see, I grieve with them and for them, but with hope, as they share in the same hope, namely that death is not final, okay? That death isn't final, yeah. That God will raise us through Christ and in Christ in the resurrection at the end, that we are not condemned to the vast emptiness of death itself. We are more than dust, and to dust we shall return. Ash Wednesday. But that dustiness is replete with eternity. And we will rise, and we'll share again together our faith and our love for each other. We will once again share in the intimacy of love in Christ and through Christ and in eternal happiness. I tell this story over and over, and I'll tell you one more time, okay? But when I was in Italy in 1973, I don't know if I recorded this or not, or I just said it somewhere, I don't remember. But I, I was with my mother and father, and we were visiting in Lucca. My grandmother on my mother's side, her family, and it was her sister, would have been much younger, okay? But it was her sister. So she was in her 80s then. By then, my grandmother was gone. But upon leaving, it's an Italian custom to say this, talk about the faith being in their bones and in their language. She said to me something, and it's poignant, and it hits right here. She said to me, Raimondo, ti uh, uh, oh, ci vediamo in paradiso. Ci vediamo in paradiso. And I finally said it. And my mother looked at me, and she said, we will see each other again in paradise. I think of that with my cousin Harry and Nancy, Frankie, Frankie Coppola, Nancy's husband, all whom I have loved and been loved by, my parents, all with whom I have walked this life. Ci vediamo in paradiso. 
Cibidiano. We will see each other again in paradise, in Cristo, in Christ.